Hello everyone, Miss Carrie here from Miss Carrie's Creations. Today I'm sharing a page that I created for the Scrap the Boys February Challenge, where we are each featuring a layout with a boy's best friend. I'll be sharing a grid design, which I feel is one of the easier types of pages to create. The photos I'm using today are of our son fishing with our pup. These were taken a few years back during a rainy camping trip and she refused to leave his side. I have gathered a mix of supplies to make my layout. I have some patterns from Pink Fresh with blue, green, and gray, and they're going to go well with these photos. I'm going to pair them with some stickers, woodies, and other elements that match the theme of the layout. I have some pink fresh pieces that match the pattern paper, some Simple Stories lakeside items, and a few items from 49 at Market and Bramble Fox. As I share this project with you, I'll be bringing in a few more of my supplies, and I'll make sure to list those in the description below and on my website for your reference. The photos were printed at 2 and 3 fourths inches. So I've added a frame around each of them to make them three by three. I'm going to be laying them on the page with some pattern paper behind them. I want to create a vertical design with six sections. So I need this paper to be a little bit wider than six inches. At the top of the page, I'm going to layer a few pattern papers and pieces of ephemera. A strip of this plaid pattern is going to go across the top of the page. I want to tear this pattern, so I'm using a water brush to help me control the tearing. I just run the brush down the edge and then I'm able to tear right along that water line. Under that pattern paper, I'm going to add some bits of ephemera from 49 and Market. These are all random leftover cuts that I had from some projects, and I'm going to trim them down to fit the space. Before I adhere these at the top of the page, I'm going to add a little bit of ink to the edges with a foam blender, and tear a few of the pieces and rough them up with a sanding block. I want to make all of these layers look like one cohesive element at the top of the page, and the ink and the torn edges are going to help with that. I'm going to be adding some stitching to this, so I'm being very cautious about the adhesive that I'm using. If you're going to stitch on your page with a sewing machine, you want to avoid tape runners or double-sided tape. Those can gum up your machine. I'm just using a tiny bit of liquid adhesive to tack these down, and I won't do any of the sewing until the adhesive is completely set. The next step is to add some stamping and stenciling to my background. I'm using the same ink that I used on the edges of the patterns above, and I'm going to stamp some random lettering along the base of the page and at the top. I also want some splotches of ink to peek out behind the paper, but I don't always do well adding ink to a page in big splatters, so I'm going to use a stencil. This stencil is designed to look like splashes of color, and if you've watched any of my previous videos, you know that it's one of my favorite stencils to use. Stencils like this are great for people like me who like the look of mixed media, but want a little bit more control over the design. I would love to know how you feel about mixed media. While you're commenting below, I would love it if you tap that subscribe button and let me know in your comment if you're a new subscriber. To bring everything together, I'm going to add some splatters. I just smushed a little bit of that ink onto my glass board, added a small amount of water, and I'm using a paintbrush to add ink to the background. Using this splatter of ink on the patterns above, on the stamping and on the stencils, makes this almost appear like a pre-printed background, and I really like how it looks. All right, I am going to add that stitching to the top of the page and start adhering all my elements in place. Along the edges of those pattern papers, I ran an edge distressor, 
And now I'm going to add a little bit of ink before I adhere it down. I am going to add two pieces of pattern paper strips to frame this, and I'll bring in some blue to match the color of his jacket. Before tearing the edges of these, I am going to spray them with some water. Again, this gives me a little bit more control with the tearing, and it gives me a wider white edge on that pattern paper strip. Off camera, I added some zigzag stitching to the pattern strips. The photos have been placed onto foam adhesive sheets to pop them up off the page. And now I'm going to pick out some pieces of ephemera and add it to those three parts of my grid. Breaking down a page into a grid is a very simple way to create a scrapbook page. In each one, I'm going to use similar shapes, colors, images, and phrases. In the first square, I started with a grounding strip. It wasn't long enough, so I cut it in half, and then I covered up that open space with a tree sticker. To create a little bit of a background behind the trees, I'm adding a cardstock frame from the Pink Fresh collection. This is a really simple way to set apart this area of the grid and match that shape of the photo. I'm also going to bring in a little bit of blue to match that photo and a few little wood pieces for contrast. In the second grid, I started out with a wood grain tag that I cut from one of the pink fresh patterns. This brings in some more blue and creates a place for me to build my embellishment cluster. I brought in some nature elements. This matches the wood leaves I'm going to add and it brings in another moth shape. To match the first square, I am adding another label as a grounding strip. Again, I needed to cut it in half to lengthen it, but I will cover up that space. Now, I forgot to mention that I added a little tag over there on the right side also. This is going to allow me to bring in more texture with some twine later on. In each of the grid pieces, I want to make sure I create balance and cohesiveness. I can do that by adding elements in this space that are similar to or exactly like the other items on the page. I have already brought in a label, the wood tones, and some blue, and a circle. Behind the ticket, I added another frame, and I layered a washi sticker and some foliage stickers from the Lakeside collection around these elements. The only thing that I felt was missing was something in that large blank space. So I brought in another dark green element with a bold sentiment. This has a circular shape, so it matches some of the other circles on the page. The final grid space is going to include my journaling. Just like I did with the other two spaces, I brought in another chipboard frame. I don't have any more of the pine tree stickers, so I'm going to bring in more leaves. These came from that Lakeside Collection sticker book. At this point, I finally decided where to tuck those little fish. I decided to have them hanging from that Go Fish ticket so that it brought a deep brown element to that area of the page. I've also added a third label and a brown frame in this area. Now all I have to do is type up my journaling onto this card and then I'll share the finished layout. Off camera, I decided to add a title at the top of the page. I brought in the words Stay Curious and Explore More from my Lakeside collection. To match that brighter green title, I added an arrow next to the fish, which forms a nice visual triangle with the title, and the foliage on the journal card. Adding that metal brad required me to add a few more on the page. So I placed one with a fish image and a blue one at the top that says fresh air. I also needed to fill in some of the blank space near the journaling, so I added a little cardstock sticker with a bright blue clip that says nature lover. The last thing I added to this was some twine on the tag and some loops near the journaling to form a nice diagonal across the page and bring in a little bit more texture. I'm going to share some close-ups of this layout so that you can see all of the details. 
The photos of my boy and his pup are some of my favorites and I love how this layout makes them the focal point of the page. I enjoyed adding all the little details to this grid design and I like how all of the phrases and bits of ephemera give this page such a great masculine feel. I hope that this project inspired you to join the February Scrap the Boys Challenge. If you're one who enjoys pinning photos to inspiration boards, I have added still shots of this layout to my website and galleries. I want to thank you again for joining me as I created another scrapbook page and shared this memory with you. If you have any questions about the project or supplies listed below, feel free to leave me a comment. I hope that you have a wonderful week and I can't wait to see what you create.